funds carry forward into fiscal year 15. With the governor and evaluating all of the various options, what we are saying today is we are taking those funds and we are increasing the amount of money. Now remember, if you read LD 1776, call for rebasing, it didn't fully fund the cost. Certainly encourage the department to see what other resources may be available. What I am trying to emphasize here is there are other competing demands and needs within the program that we are continuing to look at and evaluate as we manage throughout this fiscal year. We have a challenge today that we are going to meet by allocating these funds to the nursing facilities. What's the mechanism by which these decisions are made? I know a lot of money decisions with state government require legislative approval. When, when there's surplus in the DHHS budget, does the executive branch get to just decide where it goes? We have the opportunity to improve the rates yeah. to nursing facilities. And we are taking that opportunity and utilizing these funds to meet this challenge today. So you're saying this does not require legislative approval at all? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Because when so, so, as long as it's with, uh, actually in some situations you can go within the agency, but within the agency, the commissioner and the governor have the ability to redirect some funds, and and that's what we're doing. We're not taking funds from other agency or other areas. We're taking funds that were saved, and we're making sure we're filling. Actually, we're putting holes in our. So putting the finger in the dike, we're putting a few dollars in there. I'm still not clear that that on, on Don and Alana's question, that this money was not earmarked for anything before this. It was savings for programs at the end of the year. But, but let me just, the main care program, we're, we're 2.4 billion. There is an expectation that the executive branch is effectively looking at the means to manage that. There is flexibility granted to the Department of Health and Human Services to meet the costs and expenses, especially as, as we've said, in an entitlement program where not everything can be budgeted. You have to be able to move and appropriate funds. So we have the authority. The question is whether or not there was adequate funds. It is important that we evaluated where we ended the fiscal year. And what we're saying is, right now, we see this as a glaring priority. It puts pressure on how the remaining pro the program is managed for the remainder of this fiscal year. But this is exactly where we believe we need to be today to make sure that we are supporting the nursing facilities. So let, let, let me put it another way, and this might answer. At the end of the year, you have a little pot of money left. Had the legislature come in and agreed with us to take the $5 million to put it to the nursing homes instead of the uh, smoke and cessation program, then that $5 million, the monies that we're finding now, we could have used to put against the wait list for Section 21-29, which is one area that I initially, it's a very high priority, very high priority. In fact, I really thought the legislature that would would see the, the value of taking that $5 million, moving it until at least the next legislature, but they didn't. So I had to change my priority. I took my priority from Section 2129 and said, Mary, we really need to fund nursing homes because we're going to end up with people with no place to go. So that's basically what happened. So uh, to me, it sounds like the answer is no. This was never. This money was never promised for any other program. It no, was savings okay. at the end of the okay. year. It's and basically it savings at the end of the year that Mary has a whole lot of challenges, and we could have allocated, but it turns out that because of the crisis in the nursing homes, and if losing two in a month isn't enough, we're s we could be losing two more. <laughs> so we're trying to stem that that crisis. Mary, two questions. Uh, one, how soon will this money start, be available and start flowing? And second, have you had any discussion with the Pittsfield Nursing Home whether this additional funding will make has any chance of reversing their decision? On the first question, our effort and plan is to make this retroactive to July 1st. This is a complicated methodology. We've been working closely, as I said, um, with our um, providers to make sure that the data that we have is accurate and that the calculations are accurate. It requires 
emergency rulemaking, but the intent and the plan is to make this retroactive to July 1st. I have not personally had um, specific conversations with the Pittsfield nursing facility. We are, though, looking broadly at the challenges that that facility and others have faced, uh, which is in some ways also related to Medicare policy and the reimbursement for skilled nursing facility beds and the competition that they experience with critical access hospitals. So as part of the broader long-term vision that the governor outlined for the 16-17 budget, we absolutely are looking at other reforms <coughs> to help address some of these other challenges. You mentioned, so, sorry, Michelle, you mentioned that this, this requires emergency rulemaking? Definitely. Yes. All right. And can you just update us on the status of the emergency rulemaking for 1776 that's become an issue today? And I'm just curious about when do you think that would be completed and when would the money from that particular bill be in So this will all be done together. Yeah, where we will be implementing uh, the emergency rule, the rate letters will all go out to the nursing facilities, and it will be the entire $25 million as part of that process. And as I said, we've had the benefit of some meaningful and constructive feedback from providers that have helped to further refine uh, and ensure an appropriate application of the methodology that we've been working feverishly for weeks on this effort and, and Rick can certainly attest to the level of uh, complexity involved in the reimbursement structure for nursing facilities. But the commitment is to a retroactive July 1st so that the reimbursement rates will be for an entire fiscal year. And you're not sure if this is going to save the two homes that are slated for closure? No. I can't speak to those specific facilities and right. the other competing challenges that they may face. And some of them have already moved. But you're confident that this will help prevent the closure of the other two that you yes. said are on the verge? Yes. Well, I, I want to be careful that there are lots of business decisions mm -hmm. that an owner and a facility may make. Our desire here is to address the inequity in the reimbursement rate and to try and put an infusion of cash into the system that is recognizing their more current costs. Without causing harm. But I want to be clear. You cannot overnight repair the damage of years and years of inadequate funding. Mary, in terms of recognizing these savings, was there any particular area that, that drove the brunt of, of this money, uh, such as, I don't know, the dropping of the non-cats in January or something of that nature? It's, you, you can't, in this program this size, label these savings attributable to anyone. There has been such a uh, variety of reforms, certainly eligibility reforms, but significant efforts. Uh, many of you are aware of some of the coverage around the pain management uh, effort that we initiated that has reduced the prescribing for pharmaceuticals for uh, opiates. That has produced savings. The emergency department project has produced over $9 million in savings since its inception in 2011. Our health homes that were launched more than a year ago has prevented readmissions, has reduced avoidable hospital admissions and ED use. There are many, many ongoing efforts that the totality of has helped to produce and rein in the spending. Sorry to ask this again, just something so I get this right. With regards to the question of the way th this money that was identified as savings, was it ever promised anywhere else before it was going to the nursing homes? The answer is no. The answer is no. Okay. It, it was not promised, but we will look, we yeah, have priorities. I get it. I, okay. I understand. Just yeah. to be clear, too, uh, Steve had mentioned something about this requiring new rulemaking. Which which piece of this plan is it that's going to require new rulemaking, and how long will that take? So any time that we do rate changes, it is a it is a very prescriptive regulatory process. So. All of the changes between the rebasing and the, there were, the, the other provision in LD 1776 referred to uh, facilities that have a high percentage of Medicaid residents. That is all part of this rule and the rate letters that will be issued to the nursing facility. We have been working on the rule for weeks and weeks. But the rule is dependent upon 
the finalization of the methodology. The methodology has been contingent upon the total available funding. But we are been working to aggressively get this finalized and are optimistic within the next couple of weeks we will be able to um, put the emergency rule into effect, get the rate letters out, and make this retroactive to July 1st. Is it accurate to say that some homes will get more, but none will get less? That is accurate. But how do you think this person figure it out? Is it, is it just done by per patient or per, I mean, or is it done by the need that each person at home has? And so it's a rebasing, and this is what the governor was describing. The point behind the phrase rebasing is nursing homes have not kept pace. The costs that they're reimbursed are dated. The point of rebasing is to raise their, or to address their current costs and reimburse based upon those costs. But the point that the governor was making is if you've been struggling for the last several years and you've been cutting and cutting and cutting, you may have been paid at a higher rate because your costs were greater several years ago. The legislation, LD 76, 1776, was a rebasing. So now we're going to look at your current costs, which you may have reduced because of your financial challenges. That's why the hold harmless provision is so critical. Yeah. And that's in that bill already. Yes. Yeah, that's in the bill, and, and that's the point. If you rebased, then the part of the bill, you couldn't hold people harmless. It was going to hurt a lot of people. So you had to make a decision, you know, are you going to hold harmless or are you going to rebase? You can't do both because there's not enough money that was allocated to do both. The, the and we have to find more money even to do just do what we've done. The bill required that you rebase all the nursing facilities and then you reduce their rate based upon the lack of available funding to cover the total cost of rebasing. And what we were striving to do, attempting to focus on that hold harmless provision, was to ensure that no one saw a reduction. And I'm just trying to underscore the complexity of the various calculations that are embodied in nursing facility reimbursement and the legislative intent in LB 1776 and the fact of the matter was, $4 million that was appropriated would not have made the kind of dent and difference. And adding this money helps to ensure that we have more that we'll see an increase, ultimately. Uh, and, and, yeah. the and the bottom line, I'd like to say this. That's the complexity that the department dealt with. My complexity was much, much easier. It was just simply that, Mary, I do not want to lose any more nursing homes. That simple, and that's the type of crisis we're dealing with. I think Rick wants to just comment. Yeah, a couple of things following up on what Mary had said, and that is, the department, I believe, is doing an outstanding job of making the rebasing a priority. It is extremely complex, and they're making great progress. The good news is, it is retroactive to July 1. Facilities have not billed yet for July because the period that this will cover won't take it. The period this will cover won't be billed until the first week of August. So at this point, we're not even behind. Uh, but we have worked closely with the department, and I'm very impressed with the speed that they're working at this, so I mean, I'm grateful for that. Um, and as far as we have seen what happens, if you have an underfunded rebasing, yes, some facilities will benefit from that. But there's no doubt that in order for that to happen, because it's really sort of a reallocation of whatever amount of money you have to work with, if some facilities' rates go up, which they will, it is likely that there will have to be some going down because the pie isn't big enough. You're basically slicing it into different portions. If you don't have enough, you don't have a big enough pie, someone will be hurt, and that's what they're trying to avoid, and that's what we believe should happen as well. If the administration knew that this funding was available, why not go through with the plan in May when the Democrats said that they weren't, they had no plan? June 30th, the end of the year, so we didn't know. Yeah. It's that simple. I mean, you, 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 I mean, Mary's been telling me we're making some progress. She's given me some reports. It looks like the, uh, the weekly payments are, you know, 
And so we, but we never know. You can have one week, uh, you're paying out 35 million, and the next week it's 60 million because, the, you know, it, it's dynamic, it's moving. And so we didn't really know. In fact, you don't even know June 30. You don't know till about maybe the 10th of July that once they start closing books out that you, hey, you might have a few bucks, extra bucks here. We knew there was going to be some savings. Mary had alerted me that it's likely we're going to have some savings. And I will tell you, where I was heading with that money was the waiting list. That's where I would have put all that money had I been able to. But with the crisis in the nursing homes, we had to shift. But I, I, again, I want to stress, there are other ongoing areas within the main care program that while we are working to accurately forecast state fiscal year 15, we also were evaluating at the same time, are there other holes that we may need these funds for? And it is this crisis today and concern today about the nursing facilities that is why we are putting these funds today to the nursing facilities. Adrian, we're all set. Thank you, Mary. I think we're all set. If you have any other questions, let me know. Happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.